Hello, Timpire. Uh, it's Carl. You might remember me, you might not. But, um, yeah, okay. I'm coming back, apparently. So, you know, I have not uploaded anything in a couple months again after I said I would, and I didn't because, you know, I'm a dirty liar. Um, but you might note that I have a better microphone now. And one of the chief reasons I didn't upload was because I wanted to get a new microphone. I got one, and then I just, I'm a little admittedly lazy. I wanted to upload things to my actual channel, my standalone one. Um, and I got all caught up in that, so that's all without, that's all about. However, I return to you now, as the title of the video might lead you to assume, with a new series. Now, for all you Star Wars fans on this channel, of which I presume there are many, this one is for you. I am obviously the mega Star Wars nerd here. Um, I'm also a raging Legends fanboy. I do not like the new canon. I have nothing to do with it. I have nothing to do with the new film. Out of the way for people who don't know that already, although I'm sure you can get that if you watch any of my old stuff. Um, but I've decided to do comic book reviews from all the Legends comics I can get my hands on. Um, I don't have all of them. I'm not going to do them any sort of sequential order, but I have a lot. Um, and on my original channel, I asked people to do a quick, uh, what's the word? Poll, I guess, to tell me which comic book series to begin with. And they chose, as you can tell by the title, Dark Empire. Dark Empire is one of the more stranger ones out there, so let's have a little fun while we're at it. Um, but to put down the rules of this new series of videos, I'm going to do reviews on comics, usually on an issue-by-issue issue basis. So, like, we're going to begin with Dark Empire 1, but we're going to begin with Issue 1 of Dark Empire 1. Um, there might be days I decide to do 1, 2, or 2, 3, 3, and 4, 3, 4, 5, you know, multiple issues at once, especially if we get into comic book series like um, Knights of the Old Republic or Legacy, where there's like over freaking 50 issues. It's not prudent to do one at a time, because, you know, I'm going to have 50 plus videos just doing one issue after one issue after one issue. Um, and I, I don't think some people will appreciate that, <laughs> understandably. So, with that out of the way, uh, oh, one other thing, stipulation. You guys may feel free to ask me to do specific um, comic book series. Please regulate them to Legends comic books. I have no interest in the new Marvel crap. We might end up having to look at old Marvel stuff that ended up in Legends because it came back way, it came out way back in like early 80s. And which, you know, it did happen. Um, but I don't, I don't, I don't want anything to do with the new, uh, canon. I don't care. I hear about what happens in the new universe, and I just, I can't find myself caring about anything that goes on within it. Like, I can bitch, I can moan, we can all do that. But at the end of the day, do I really care? Not really. Um, but, like, once we're done with the Dark Empire... Uh, Dark Empire number one. I might uh, wait to do a Dark Empire number two. Um, once we're done with Dark Empire number one, you can feel free to right now or later on say, hey, why don't you look at mm, this one, say Crimson Empire um, or Dawn of the Jedi. God help us. <laughs> um, but like uh, another quick rule. I know I'm almost five minutes into still stay saying rules. I apologize. Um, another quick rule. Not a rule, but more just a funny thing I feel like doing is I'm going to go through each issue, and I'm going to give my thoughts on it, of course, which is, you know, is the point. Um, I'm going to probably be very spoiler-y, so if you don't, won't, don't want to have any spoilers, I will attempt to tell you whether or not to go ahead and look at, you know, Dark Empire or whatever, um, which, when it comes to Dark Empire, go ahead and look at it, read it, see if you like it. Problem is is that it's not for everyone. I will say that. Dark Empire brings up some weird things, some weird concepts, and Dark Empire is the source of a lot of people's um, evidence when it comes to the new canon and the destruction of legends. A lot of people who agree with it point to Dark Empire because Dark Empire is so weird. However, 
If you're like me, it doesn't bother you that much. If you're like other people, it really doesn't bother you that much. If you're like some, you love it. So go ahead and try and read Dark Empire if you can get a hold of it, but I will be going through basically the whole thing. I will be giving away spoilers. I will put up as many pictures as I can because I do have the ability to show you pictures. Um, and uh, I don't have the greatest software or programs for presenting these things. I will do my best to show you a panel or a series of panels that I'm talking about in relation to a scene or something like that. Don't expect AAA quality here. This is more for fun on my part, and hopefully it, you know, entertains or gets a couple of you guys interested in actually picking up some comics from Legends yourself. I would recommend if you do so, buy it from Dark Horse's website, because at the very least you can give some royalties to Dark Horse. They still deserve to get royalties for the good work they did on Star Wars, and I mean some will, some proceeds will inevitably go to Disney. Sad as that is, uh, for me at least, please support Dark Horse because, I mean, they're you know like not the biggest comic book guys out there, but hey, they have quality and they try. So, one final thing, um, at the end of every comic book series, I will tell you whether or not I personally think that a comic book series I read is like super canon for instance as I stated on my video on my actual channel um, there is degrees of canonicity within legends like I will, I, will, I will have a rating system 1 through 5 if something is a level 1 canon for me and within legends it's hard canon I can't dispute it someone else can't dispute it it's just there you have to deal with it that would be the movies. If you want to argue the point with me, feel free, but I'm not going to argue with you. That is canon. I, I will not dispute anything in the movies. One through six, mind you. Two is something that uh, I find super canon. I it's, part, it's an integral part of the universe. It may contradict a couple things, um, but at the end of the day, you can sign it off. Three, same deal, except it maybe contradicts a little bit more. Uh, maybe doesn't answer a couple questions, maybe it leaves too many doors open, maybe it confuses people. Four, um, it's, it's okay, maybe it's canon, but it really, if you didn't consider the story part of the canon, part of the universe, it wouldn't bother you. It wouldn't break anything. If, in fact, it might actually fix a couple things if it wasn't there. And then five is, I mean, it could exist, it couldn't, it's probably not that, it's not that good. It's not really, it doesn't help the canon at all, it breaks... Um, a lot of canon of other things, um, stories, movies, whatever. It 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 ruins the universe. And then six is just non-canon. I I don't. It's not there. Just don't talk to me about it. Which can happen. There are things within Legends that I think are so bad that they should not be considered canon. But you can basically consider that Carl's canon. But I generally find all of Legends to be okay. Um. Episode, episode 7 is like, you know, a level 6 canon to me. It's just, it doesn't matter. Go away. <laughs> um, if an uh, individual issue is warranting such a rating, I will, I will give it and say like, okay, this one issue breaks the whole story. So try and ignore it or whatever. But that'll probably be more rare now that I think about it more in depth. Um, but anyway, that out of the way nearly 10 minutes in let's begin with dark empire number one issue number one because i'm sure there will be some people who are interested and who don't want to look this stuff uh, stuff up for themselves i will say that the writer of dark empire is tom veitch he writes some very strange things <laughs> um uh yeah i mean his stuff is stuff can be good but it just gets like really out there into the just craziness sometimes um the artist for the book is cam kennedy letterer todd klein editor barbara kessel i think and dave dorman is the cover artist um i will throw up a cover art right here so yeah cover doesn't look bad um i think if you want to start talking about the artistry of the comic itself We'll get there with uh, Cam Kennedy, and you all can decide whether or not you find it interesting. So, yeah. So, to begin, we open up on the uh, unofficial, obligatory Star Wars text crawl, because, you know, no matter what material you're doing your Star Wars stuff in, it has to have a frickin' text crawl. But, 
anyway, you know, whatever. So it goes on to tell us that, well, you know, after the death of Darth Vader and the death of the Emperor, the rebels proclaimed a new republic and they took over three fourths. Well, they proclaimed a new republic over three fourths of the galaxy. Um, <laughs> but apparently, the battle with the Empire didn't go that well. It's a precarious battle, whatever. <laughs> Long years of war, the usual Imperial remnant, you know, fighting them off. And uh, apparently, the rebels took over the vital Imperial system. I'm going to assume the Imperial system is Coruscant. I mean, I, I assume that's what they're getting at there, but it's a little confused in my opinion. But then, hey, guess what? The Empire came back, and they took back the Imperial system because the Empire regained control over the years of fighting, and they got stronger, as usual. I, I don't know. I mean, we know the story at this point. I mean, we know the Thrawn stuff happened, the other Imperial stuff happened, but you, you gotta understand, when Dark Empire came out, a lot of that material, except for Thrawn and a couple other books, weren't exactly talking about, you know, the immediate aftermath of uh, the Rebels versus the Empire in term, uh, in the New Republic's formation. But, you know, we'll let it slide. And then without warning, civil war erupted between the Empire. Factions of the Imperial Navy fighting the Empire for control. The Emperor's ruling circle apparently getting in trouble with people. I don't know who that is trying to reference. Sate Pestage, maybe? I don't know. But yeah, apparently the Emperor's ruling circle needs to get the hell out of space because apparently the other people don't like them. Um, <sighs> I don't know. You know, obviously we're meant to see later on that the real person fighting them is not, you know, it, it's... You know what, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna save it for the, when we get there. Um, so the Rebels seized the opportunity, and they started taking over Star Destroyers and entering Imperial hot zones, firing on Imperials, basically sparking more civil conflict, because, you know, if you're the Rebel Alliance, causing other people to kill millions of their fellow Imperials just to weaken both sides is a good thing. You know, I understand the divide and conquer, but, you know, the Empire, I mean... Sorry, the Rebels' morality sometimes really gets to me. But that's just a personal opinion. And it goes and tells us that uh, Luke and Lando were on a Star Destroyer called Liberator. <laughs> of course they were. And they went to Imperial City Battleground, which I'm going to assume um, is a battle happening on Coruscant. Uh, I believe it actually is. Um, but that the Star Destroyer went down... Uh, into the city, and only because of Luke using deflector shields and anti-grav braking system, uh, that the ship basically uh, remained mostly intact and didn't kill everybody aboard. Um, okay, so yeah, fine setup, let's go to the first page. So we open up on the very first panel and we begin to see one of the problems people have with the comic already, and you know, why I mentioned uh, Kennedy earlier as the artist, um, it's unique. You know, I, I'm gonna say right now, I don't have a problem with it, but I mean, just, if you look at it, which I'm showing you right now, it does seem a little kind of like, what are you, it's hyper stylized, I get that, and it's dark, which, you know, dark empire, whatever, but, like, I don't know what they're trying to portray here, I mean, I get Han, Leia, and Chewie, and all that, I get the characters, but what the f- I mean, I guess this is supposed to represent hyperspace, but, it, you know, <sighs> hyperspace has always been a funny thing in Star Wars, it isn't exactly pinned down how it's supposed to look, you know, some people have the swirl, some people have the stars going around you, it's not wholly clear, but, you know, it just, it looks more like a, a distorted program created in, like, a, I don't know, a computer program in the early 90s, more than something someone actually drew. If someone actually drew this, then, I mean, good for them. I mean, it, it is visually interesting, but, you know, not necessarily for everybody. Either way, they're going there. I should say Han, Leia, Chewie, and 3PO are going towards Imperial System to find out what the hell happened to Luke and Lando. Han says, oh hey, there's turbulence on a re-entry, which 
I didn't know that that was a thing, that you can tell that there's going to be turbulence on your re-entry from hyperspace, but whatever. Han says, battle debris, 3PO spouts off the usual, hey, let me give you some... Let me give you some odds, obviously, you know, leading to the joke. Oh, I don't want him to tell me the odds. Bullshit, as usual. Um, Han being Han. Han screaming. <laughs> and, yeah. I, I will mention that I don't mind the way Han and Leia look, but really, I mean, I don't really see Harrison Ford or Carrie Fisher here. I mean, I know who they're supposed to be, and that's not a problem. But for me, it just doesn't really look like them. And like I said, this is one of the main issues people have with the Dark Empire is that its art style is not there is not people's favorite. <laughs> but anyway, let's keep going. So they come in out of hyperspace into the freaking <laughs> into the wrecking of a great space battle wreckage field. Oh my god! And apparently, the Millennium Falcon is. Retrofitted with the latest light speed ion engines. Whoop de frickin' D. Um some escort frigates follow them in. Uh you know, they're warning them about all the damage, all that crap, the Millennium Falcon going in, the usual stuff. Next panel, they're going in towards the planet. Uh Han saying Luke and Lando obviously don't need their help because he just knows that they don't need their help. Leia's saying, Well, no, they're you know, Basically saying that their beacon doesn't really match that information. Just general, hey, I don't think they need help. Yeah, they do need help. Chewie says something we obviously don't understand. And Han says, you're right, Chewie. I'm wrong. Obviously, we need to go in and help them. Completely disregarding anything Leia just said, which I find hilarious. I love, too, that Han basically reports to their escort ship. Oh, you know, don't worry about us. We're going to go in. We're going to check it out. The alien, I guess... Uh, you know, the captain of the ship says something in his own language <laughs> and Han's like, what did he say? 3PO <laughs> 3PO translate and Han just looks like a big idiot but, you know, some people find that charming about Han is that, oh, he's really smart but he's also a real idiot when you want him to be but, you know, I digress um, they go into the planet um, wow <laughs> I mean again, the art isn't bad it's just it looks funny because I, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be Coruscant and it looks like a barren wasteland save for the distant spires. I mean, it says Imperial City, which is a city on Coruscant. So it just, it looks funny to me, uh, especially with what looks like clouds in the distance. Like, it looks almost like a water painting. And I'm assuming the clouds are either supposed to be just clouds or rising smoke from the great battle, as we'll see in the next panel, which... Admittedly, this is a cool scene, the one that I'm hopefully showing you at this point. Um, showing TIE fighters going all over the place, spires actually smoking, um, tank vehicles that look weird, although I'm sure I've seen them before. What looks like a Centurion TIE tank, or just Centurion tank. AT-ATs and other Imperials shooting at each other. Yeah, you know, the good stuff of the Empire, blowing each other out of the sky and out of everywhere. Um, Imperial Walkers are shooting at the freaking Millennium Falcon because, you know, we've seen that they are capable of shooting at ships flying around. If you've watched episode 5, that is true. Um, they move in toward the debris. The at to get shot down. Uh, by Han, apparently. <laughs> Come to find out, it wasn't the Empire shooting the Empire, although we've been told the Civil War was raging on the planet. It was actually the Empire fighting the Rebels who landed in the uh, Star Destroyer Liber Liberator, did I call it? I already forgot. <laughs> and Lando's leading them, obviously. Uh, Han, Leia, and 3PO meet up with Lando, R2, 3PO, and R2 meet up like the old married couple they are. For some reason, they thought it was a good idea to bring Ewoks in on a fucking mission like this, but hey, why not? Um, they ask where Luke went. He said something about the dark side still being powerful. He took off, blah, blah, blah. We don't know where he is. Let's carry on. So we're told via narration that they've been fighting scavengers on the planet because they're all drawn there from across the galaxy due to the amount of wreckage and war junk all over the place. And that they're hot-wiring hot weapons droids and they created their own army and are basically assaulting the rebels 
as well as the Imperials for wreckage. It okay, whatever. And so then the freaking scavengers just roll in with this freaking I don't know what that is. I mean, you know, it's some sort of vehicle. And they unleash these war droids on them, make a move, and oh, they're between us and the Millennium Falcon. That's great, you know. <laughs> I don't know why this concept concept of scavengers running all over the place, like launching mini wars upon everybody is like it's a Star Wars thing. I mean, yeah, I understand the concept of hey, there's been a lot of war going on, let's try and scavenge, but they're just gonna form a small army and land on an Imperial planet where there's civil war going on, pick up all the scavenge and or scavenge junk, and then just be like, hey, the Imperials don't like us being here. Let's create a bunch of war droids and kill them all. It's like, I don't see that happening. Gotta love this. The scavengers literally launch this attack on them just so they can all run up onto the Millennium Falcon and try and tear it apart like a bunch of junkies trying to just rip a car apart so they can sell it for more drugs. I mean... That was the only thing I can really compare this to. I, this is okay, whatever. Um, Han gets all pissed, telling him to get off the Millennium Falcon. He wants to run after them. They release Nex, N E K S, Cyborian Battle Dogs. I don't even know how to describe what the fuck these things are. I mean, look at them. <laughs> I don't. Good God, they look like something out of a demonic nightmare. Uh, I mean, sure, you could say that about a lot of things in Star Wars, but holy crap. Uh, so we get a little banner between Leia and Han. She's using the Force to try and get uh, the droids and the Cyborian battle dogs away from them. And Han's just like, I prefer a blaster. I'm going to blow them all away and blah, blah, blah. You know what his, his stupid stance is. So the next scene is pretty awesome, though, where... The battle dogs get all thrown freaking hard away from them. And Han's like, gee, Leia, I didn't know you could do that. And she's like, it wasn't me. Look over there. And obviously it's, you know, a shadowy figure that looks like Darth Vader. And he's hanging out of a wrecked porthole. I don't know. He raises his hand. The dogs go flying. He raises his hand again. The droids start exploding. Um, he comes walking out. It's like, oh, hey, it's not Darth Vader. It's just Luke. And he looks a lot like Darth Vader. That's strange. AT-AT comes out of nowhere. <clears throat> um, I'm guessing it's getting ready to shoot. <laughs> you gotta love this. It shoots at him, and Luke deflects the blast with his lightsaber, and it goes flying back into the AT-AT, and it hits it in its in its uh, facial position, or its head, a facial position, God. It hits it in the head, and Luke just uses the force and brings it crashing down. <laughs> I never knew you could deflect an AT-AT freaking cannon shot with your lightsaber. I mean, God, it is awesome to see him just bring down an AT-AT. But come on, man. You can't, you can't ever make me believe deflecting a giant laser cannon from an AT-AT with your lightsaber is a real thing. I mean, just don't even try. But let's let's carry on. So... Leia says she sees something in Luke's eyes that she's never seen before, obviously implying something's afoot. Um, that really doesn't look like Mark Hamill. I'm just going to say it right there, but whatever. I mean, it looks fine. He looks interesting, but it doesn't look like Mark Hamill. Um, Han says that they're not going to... Oh, yeah, by the way, Luke says, no, all of you have to leave except for me because I went to the palace and it's like super-duper evil. Someone evil here is using the Force and it's really dark. So obviously they're on Coruscant. I mean, that answers my question before, but it doesn't really look like Coruscant. Um, then again, you know, film wasn't out, so they don't really know what Coruscant looked like. I know the argument. I'm just saying. Um, he tells them to leave. They're like, no, we came all the way over here to get you. And he's just like, no, usual. As we wrap up, we see that up in space, the captain of the Antares 6, which, you know, I, I didn't even mention was his name, see this giant swirling wormhole thing come out of, you know, nowhere, and it's an awesome sight. Obviously, it's a forced storm. It's coming down, bearing down on the planet towards Luke, Leia, Han, all of them. Luke says, all of you need to get out of here. Uh, you all don't need to die, too. Leia comes in and says, no, we're brother and sister Jedi. We, we can stop it together. 
And Luke is like, no, you, your children are the future of the Jedi. You don't have to die with me. Go ahead and leave. I don't necessarily understand why he doesn't get on the Millennium Falcon as well. I'm assuming he thinks that if he doesn't stand there and take it or try and stop it, it'll absorb just everybody. I don't know. Han, all of them, they go towards Millennium Falcon. You know, they said a Star Destroyer came down. I'm, I'm going to guess they didn't really have that many Rebels on if they're all able to fit a Millennium Falcon. Either way, they go towards it. Leia doesn't want to leave him. Han just says, yeah, he's crazy, but, you know, let him die, I guess. It's like, you know, great. Thank you, Han. Good job, buddy. R2 wants to stay with him. 3PO acts like, you know, a worried wife. And is like, no, R2, you can't stay. And, again, I think it's Han saying, oh, well, I guess Luke will have to protect him as well while he's protecting himself. Let's get on board. Bye, Luke. Good job. Uh, you know, they stand there. Luke does the Y from the YMCA pose as the Force Storm absorbs him and R2. Um, boom. You know, he's gone, and the whole place just starts going crazy, being sucked into the Force Storm. Um, then, you know, last panels, Han consoling Leia. She's all sad. They're getting ready to leave, obviously, and that's it. That is the very first issue of Dark Empire. Um... My dodgy explanations aside, after all, this is my first time doing this. Um, it it's interesting. I will say. I mean, this this I could see how this could you know suck people in. Going, what the hell was that? Obviously, if you want to bring people in for another issue of your comic, you're gonna leave them on something like that, where hey, the whole fucking planet is being assaulted by a giant whirlpool that just came out of space. Um, Luke is absorbed. He looks all strange and slightly despondent wearing this dark aura not really armor but clothing um the stylized artwork isn't bad it's just strange you know cyborian battle dogs <laughs> hey if you really like cyborian battle dogs you'll like them being here i've never i have never heard of them anywhere else nor if i do i think they're really in anything else but that happens with a lot of star wars material they introduce something it's never brought up again but you know it's there if you need to use it um Oh no, I think it's very it's very interesting. Like I said, you know, I'm not going to give a specific like deduction on why you should or should not read an individual comic book issue like this, but I think for an opening this is very good. Uh, you know, a couple of issues aside, like scavengers waging war on Coruscant with the Imperials and Rebels trying to just scavenge everything they get their hands on by activating war droids and unleashing Cyborian battle dogs and everybody. Um, Luke apparently made it to the palace. I didn't mention that, but, you know, he apparently just walked in. I don't know what the hell's going on in Coruscant. The, the Empire is supposed to be all over the place, yet I barely see them going anywhere. Luke freaking deflecting an at, at shot back at its head and bringing it down after it's been hit is just ridiculous in an awesome way. But, yeah. We'll continue this later on with Dark Empire 1, issue number 2, when I get around to it. Um, but anyway, uh, I know this probably feels a little disjointed, a little kind of all over the place, but yeah, you know, give me feedback, tell me what you think. Um, and yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy this little dive into ridiculousness that is the Dark Empire series, as you will see. And, um, yeah, hopefully you like that I'm back and, uh, you know, want me to continue this series. I've probably said that, like, you know, twice now. But uh, anyway, you all hear me ramble to you soon. Um, until then, I'm Carl. You can call me that if you want. Not my real name, but why not stick with it? It's working. It's not broken. Keep going with it. Um, so yeah, until the next time, goodbye.